research. Today we've got an interesting test to do. So I happened to, for random reasons, I'm not sure why, a couple years ago, pick up a 24 inch AR barrel and build it out just because, hey, it was cheap, it was spiral fluted, it looks cool. And in our previous testing, we found out that thing gives you the absolute balls, bees knees of velocity. <laughs> Because it, it, it's off the charts, it's beautiful. And we've done that for some testing, and I was reading a book earlier this year, and they were talking about a bolt action 300 blackout with a suppressor on it. I'm like, so what if I took that and turned it to 11? Well, that project is still upcoming. But for that, I need to get a Remington 700 receiver, and as it turns out, I lost all the FFLs in my state, so it ended up being easier and cheaper for me to just buy a built-out Remington 700 than it would be to go and try and find a new FFL within area of my home. I think I'd have to go about 60 miles to get to an FFL in my state now. I know, joys, joys, happiness, lovely. I know FFL starting, but getting an FFL to bring all this stuff in still a pain. So I managed to find a nice deal, about $300, picked up a Remington 700 and 223. And it's got a 24 inch barrel on it. So I figure, all right, before I pull that and put the new barrel on this, let's test the velocity against that 24 inch AR and see how it compares. Now, the chambers are different. The AR-15 has a 223 wild chamber where the Remington 700 has a 223 Winchester chamber though the 223 Winchester is supposed to have a tighter throat so you should in theory see higher velocity than out of the wild. Yeah. I mean is that correct? That's what I understand. So if we're going to test this I figure all right let's pick up some 223 ammo. So we're going to go and we're going to do the high end and the low end. We happen to meet up a friend who's got a lab radar. We're going to try and test that and see how it compared against a magneto speed an optical chronograph, which is just a regular crony brand one, and then the lab radar. Well, unfortunately, the lab radar didn't work out so well for us. We only got a couple of readings. Mm -hmm. And the differential between the optical crony chronograph and magneto speed stayed about the same at 100 feet per second. But for this testing, we've mounted the magneto speed to both the guns, and we tested the same lot of ammo, so we had 20 rounds, and we took every other round out of that box of ammo and we ran every other round through the bolt action. And then we took the remainder of that and put it through the AR-15. That way we can keep it so we're not going to see weird velocity differentials because it's all going to be from the same lot in the same box of ammo. And pulling it randomly like that should keep it so any variations over time get spread out equally amongst we, both. We evened it out as best as we could. And from our results, that appears to be the case. So on low end, we did 40 grains, and that was the Hornady Varmint Express loaded. So what we're looking at for an average out of the 24 inch gun, on the magneto speed, we were reading 3,985.2 feet per second on average. Now, we did see a decent number of shots over 4,000 feet per second, but 3985 ain't bad. That's still smoking. <laughs> now, here's where the robot pisses in the Kool-Aid. On the AR-15, the average velocity was 4,015 feet per second. And everyone's going, wait, 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 what now? But the AR-15 taps gas, so it should be slower. So you're telling me that stealing energy to run the gas system doesn't slow down the bullet? Well, I would say, based on our, our testing, since we didn't have the same barrel from the same manufacturer, though trying to do this test that way is almost going to be impossible to do. And if I think I can think of a way we could do it, but it would cost nearly a grand just to do the test. I think what's more important is going to be how your chamber is cut and yep. your rifling. That's going to be the key importance. 
And since we're seeing higher here, this is the 40 grain, this is the light one. So, okay, let's go for the heavy end. We're gonna do some SIG 77 grain hunting loads. I believe the average standard deviation we were seeing was about 12 feet per second. It was loaded very, very consistently, and we went through the same process. So we were pulling every other round out of this case, this box of ammo, and we ran it through both guns, so it should be statistically nil. And we used the same procedure for another test, and we were using different boxes of ammo, doing the same thing through it, and we tested two 223 wild barrels from the same manufacturer, and the average standard deviation was one foot per second in the average. That's one. So I would say that in itself proves our methodology is solid. And that test, that's coming up. We, we tested 223 wild versus 556, and we tried doing two barrels of each. One of the 556 gave us some weird stuff. So that video is in the future. We'll probably come back to it. But on to the 77 grain. Now this is a 223 loading, not a 556 loading. We had to be very careful about that because while the 223 Wild could shoot both safely, the 223 Winchester of the Remington 700 could not shoot both safely. And we were trying to go, this is a safe loading, so we used 223 Winchester on all of this. On the bolt action gun, we were looking at 2,661 feet per second. That's really respectable for a 77 grain projectile. But here's what happens. The 24-inch AR barrel, 2,770 feet per second. Again, the semi-auto is running faster, at least for these barrels. Yes, but not by a tiny amount either. I mean, 2661 versus 2770, that's 109 feet per second average differential. That is crazy. Now, I'm pretty sure this is a Freedom Group Remington 700, so the quality control might be lacking on it. So there is that. And we were having a tough time getting that to feed additional rounds. Yeah. That, Though when we were out shooting B-roll today, it ran those rounds just perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Bolt action. Yeah, it didn't want to feed if you just laid a round into the, into the action. It, only wanted to feed from the magazine. Oh, it was still giving you fits when you were trying to feed it from the magazine. Yeah. So, and here's the thing. If you're wondering, the optical chronograph on that same bullet, because we did have a failure to read, I believe it was on the 40 grain, uh, the bolt action. So, let's go for the 77 grain out of the bolt action. Optical made all the reads, 2630. So about 30 feet per second slower on average than what the magneto speed read. That tells yep. me that those two are staying quite accurate. 2753 from the optical on the 24 inch AR. So we've got two different testing apparatuses to get the velocity and the average on both mm -hmm. is staying higher on the AR-15. Yeah. That tells me that honestly, just get a good barrel and whether or not the gun is semi-auto or manually operated, it's not, it's statistical You're, noise. It's yeah. really, that's what we're looking it's, at. It's a, every single barrel is gonna be a little bit different and it doesn't matter if you're stealing a little bit of energy to run the action, it's not gonna slow anything down. Not really, that's, that appears to be what our data says. I can't say it 100%, this is gospel truth, but I will say, I'm very impressed by that barrel manufacturer for the 16-inch 223 Wild, because we had two barrels manufactured more than a year apart. I think it was maybe as much as two years apart, mm -hmm. and they had a one foot per second deviation on average. Yeah. That tells me that company is really good on their barrel work. I mean, a one foot per second average <laughs> deviation, that's... Yeah. That's statistical noise. I mean, yeah, it, that's instrument error. That's that's a, wear on a the gust of, a gust of wind. Anything can give you a one foot per second difference. Right, and that's telling me that barrel manufacturer is spot on. So, barrel manufacturer means more than action type. 
is what this data is yeah. really telling us. Is what yeah, my that's, reading is. That's how good, how important having a good barrel is for you. Now we will drop in footage here. We did a test because I was listening to primary and secondary, and they were talking about precision rifles a while ago, and somebody said, never ever use a semi-auto for precision work because you have stuff moving in the action it's going to knock off your point of aim. I call crap because before that I built an AR-10 for long range work. I was shooting at 300 yards, a half MOA group, five out of five shots. If I went three out of five, it's a one third MOA group. Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking about this, that's like, that's pretty accurate. So we took our high speed and we did video. Now mind you, we haven't produced this video yet. I got the high speed here because trying to show you this is a royal pain. But if you go through frame by frame by frame, you will see a cone coming off the muzzle. And that is after the bullet just left. We'll drop in some 300 blackout subsonic here where we shot it in high speed. And you can see as the bullet removes the form the gas makes at the end of the barrel. And once the bar bullet is left, the shape is very distinctive. And we can see that on the 6.5 Creedmoor. We can't see the bullet because our camera can't go that fast. Sorry to say, I mean, <laughs> that 300 blackout, we're talking 1,000 foot per second on the bullet and 22,000 frames per second to make this out. Yeah. But get three frames of the bullet leaving. Oh, we got more than three frames on that, but yeah. it, it's very, very slow. It's very grainy because we're trying to push it so fast so you can see this, but you can see this distinctive gas shape and you can catch that gas shape without having to catch the bullet, which this is how we're able to do it. And it's the same bullet type from the same manufacturer, just different diameters. But what we can see here very clearly is I've seen that gas shape at the end of the muzzle. And at that point, I see zero movement on the bolt carrier. And you have to have the bolt carrier move rearward before the bolt even unlocks. Yep. So we've got gas pressure going back, but it has not opened the bolt by the time the bullet's gone on a 22 inch 6.5 Creedmoor. That kind of explains it to me all in all. Sure, you've got slightly lower gas pressure because you're filling up the volume of the tube, but we've got statistical noise here. Yeah, it, if you have a good barrel, you're still gonna have all the velocity you've, that you could get. And in all and honesty, nothing's, nothing's moved before the, bar the bullet has left the barrel. Which means any all movement is just going to eat up recoil and not screw with your point of aim. It only screws you up when you're trying to reacquire the same point of aim. But you're going to have the same problem when you go up, re take your hand off the gun, work the bolt, work it back down, and it's going to be harder to shoot. And the fact is, I'm looking at this, and bolt actions are more expensive than an AR-15 this day, these days. Especially if you get an AR-15 with a good barrel. I put that on the line of a $1,200, $1,300 bolt action, and you can get the barrel for what, two to 300 bucks? Yeah, because that the two barrels from that manufacturer that were a foot per second deviation, two hundred thirty bucks. Yeah, two hundred and thirty dollar barrel that is that well manufactured. The <laughs> two of them, from over a year apart, are that close in spec. That is amazing. And well, that's kind of all we can say on it. It's yeah. it, choose which one you prefer shooting, but I can tell you what I'm choosing every single day. AR-15 because it works, it's mm -hmm. cheap, it's easy to come across, you can get good parts for good prices, and it's just as accurate if you build it out well. Yep. And like I said, bolt actions. You build those out, what's the receiver gonna cost you? About 400 bucks. What's the barrel gonna cost you? About three to 400 bucks. What's the stock gonna cost you? At least $200. You're putting in a chassis to get AR-15-like features, 400 bucks. You're talking $1,200 plus here, and most of those chassis are just a little part that hooks to a receiver that doesn't give you a rail at the fore end, or it might, but it does not give you a stock at all, which is another. Let's see, you put a Magpul PRS on that, what does that cost you? 250 There you go. I mean, start doing the math here. An AR-15 is cheaper. The velocities, according to this, are the same. And the price is cheaper. I mean, 
cheaper, you can be as accurate if you get a good barrel, and yeah. you're spending less for a good barrel on AR-15. Get a good barrel, get a good bolt, and that's all she wrote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And honestly, I understand we haven't put out a lot of videos this year. We are doing a lot of work behind the scenes. We're trying to make things happen. We've got a lot of things planned, really awesome stuff. It's just lots of assigned the scenes work, and this doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> This is what we do as a hobby. You've got, what, three jobs, more or less? Yeah. I, I work one job that basically runs a business, so that's 24-7. So. <laughs> you work one job that's about as much work as my three? Mm -hmm. Not to mention, you've got two young boys that you've got to yeah. raise, so. Yeah. Young kids, so that takes a lot of time, too. So. I mean, that's why we haven't put out a lot of videos, but if you like this kind of stuff and you want to support us, subscribe like the video, please like the video, share it around to a couple of your friends, yep. and if you really, really, really want to support us, we do have a Patreon, so you can toss a couple of bucks our way to try and make this a little easier and try and get it out more, but in all honesty, we're looking at this and we're going, all right, we're a couple years in, YouTube keeps demonetizing these videos because they're gun stuff, even though we're not trying to say this is the gun you want to buy, this is a scientific research basically we're doing Yeah. Lots of time, lots of money, lots of precision. I can't count the number of times we've done stuff and we've tossed it because I'm like, this isn't scientifically accurate enough. Yeah. And that's really what we're going for. And we've got plans to turn this into a actual business doing stuff outside of YouTube to fund the stuff so we can bring you these cool things on YouTube. But like I said, those are the ways you can help us. And if you've got any questions or comments, leave them in. The show notes, well, not show notes, this is not the podcast. <laughs> <coughs> That's really over at Geeks, Gadgets, and Guns. <laughs> we'll probably discuss this all behind the scenes next week or at some point. But check it out and just leave a comment below and normally I'm there responding. Unless you get really trollish and then I'll just probably end up ignoring you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know the trolls of YouTube. Yep. So thanks everybody for watching.